Hey family, we're thrilled that you chose to join us this morning. Our weekend worship experience is gonna start in just a few minutes, and there are a few things that we wanted to share with you to make today the best possible experience. First, we wanna let you know that everything that you need for today's service can all be found in the description area of our stream down below. We really want to encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel, C4 Church Hawaii, and make sure that your notifications are turned on. Now that way you'll be up to date and notified anytime we start a service, anytime we upload our latest sermon, or anytime we upload any new video. All of us here at C4 are super excited that you're joining us today. We can't wait to worship with you.
Last week was such a powerful weekend. It was a weekend for us to remember on Good Friday the death of our Lord and Savior on a cross, that he died for all of mankind, the sin of humanity, and on Sunday, he rose from the grave. He's no longer in the tomb, but he's alive and he's living today. And I just feel led for us this morning is that that same hunger, that same faith, would be what we have today on this Sunday and we'd remember just as much as we did last weekend. And so if you could grab a hand of the person standing next to you, let's cross the aisles if that's possible. So Jesus, we thank you that we could gather here this morning to lift your name on high, to bless your heart, and Jesus, we just pray that as a spiritual family, we would be people who choose to remember today. That we would still remember what you did on the cross. We would still remember that the tomb is empty and that you defeated sin and death. God, may we be people who never forget. But God, the same, the same way that you're able to raise from the grave, you're able to do that in our lives, in our families, in our communities, and in our state, and in our nation. And so Jesus, we just open our minds and our hearts this morning that we would see you in a greater measure, we'd experience your love in a greater measure, and that we would leave here transformed because we had an encounter with the living God. So we bless you, we honor you, we give you all praise and glory, and all of God's people said a big amen. Amen. Can we lift him up and celebrate him and honor him? And at this time, we're going to release all the keiki. If you're registered for kids ministry, go ahead in the back. Your aunties and uncles wearing a green lanyard will walk you to the other side. Feel free to greet one another before you're seated. And if you're online, we're glad that you're here. We're going to continue in just a little bit. Welcome to our weekend worship service. All of us here at C4 are thrilled that you're joining us today. You know, our purpose is to help you pursue the freedom to be all that God has created you to be. Now, if this is your first time joining us and you wanna learn more, visit our website, c4.church. That's where you can find everything from upcoming events, how to give and opportunities to connect with us. On the homepage, you'll see a button that says connect with us. Click it, enter your information and someone from our connect team will reach out to you. You can also scan this QR code right here and it will take you to our connect form. And if you're here with us in person, there is a physical connect card in the seat pocket in front of you. Now, once you complete that, you can drop it in the tide bucket, in the box mounted to the wall, or you can give it to one of our connect team members wearing a connect lanyard. Now you can also get involved and connected beyond our weekend service. You know, there's so many opportunities and events happening in and around our church. So you can check out our website, click on events. On that tab, you will see our events calendar. You know, we believe in building a culture that celebrates what God is doing and then testifying to His goodness. We truly believe that testimonies are one of the ways that so many people can be impacted in and around our lives. So if you'd like to share something that's happened to you, big or small, email us at testimony at c4.church or you can talk with one of our pastors. Thanks so much for joining us today for our worship experience. I really believe that if you open your heart, God can do some transformative, powerful work in you today. Aloha. We are here today celebrating 
Good Friday. 38 churches coming together, unified, reconciled together as the body of Christ. Really, not so much taking into consideration our own objectives, but really with the heart to make Jesus famous. Pastors are coming together in unity, and therefore the body of Christ is coming together in unity. And this is a cry jointly for revival and awakening in the state of Hawaii and beyond. Today is like a family reunion of sorts. It's like a coming together of um, so many different streams of the body of Christ. Meeting under one banner, worshiping Jesus, uh, pleading the blood, worshiping the cross of Christ together. The desire to bring the churches together, uh, that just excited me and I'm all for um, building up the body of Christ, bringing the churches together to lift up the name of Jesus. The experience is awesome, amazing. When the worship team came up, which is also a combined worship team, it just, the presence of God came down and it's only through the Spirit that we can have unity. And I felt the Holy Spirit to this event. Tonight is a pretty historic event in my mind because um, just seeing the churches come together in unity uh, on Good Friday, a celebration of reconciliation with God, but also with other churches. And I just feel like it's been phenomenal just to worship God together, being able to be in fellowship, worshiping with one another. So it's been a powerful event uh, just to be here and to witness that. So we had 38 pastors come out on our stage and my heart was a crowd, but was more importantly, was these pastors, were these influencers, these stakeholders, where Jesus has really given them to steward the larger body of Christ. So my heart was really praying for those 38 pastors on the stage, that the spirit would move and that we would declare that this season is a season where we are seek first the kingdom of God. Scripture teaches us unity commands a blessing, that there's something that God does when his sons and his daughters unify, when they come together uh, to, to just be with the Father, to worship the Father, that a blessing comes. And I'm believing that that's coming on our island as we unify under Jesus. And it's that his people, his body would be one, that we would be unified. So it's really special that First Assembly of God, we get to host something so beautiful as what has taken place today. We're praying that this is just a spark of His glory moving in the islands, that revival is here, and that revival will raise the tide for all the churches in Hawaii. Yeah, can we just say amen? Praise the Lord, man. That was just a huge historic moment. Just churches from around the island really coming together to really celebrate Good Friday together. I just want to say I'm just so proud of our church, um, our staff uh, for stewarding this past weekend. You know, it's like a Super Bowl weekend last weekend, right? Easter Sunday is like the biggest event for the church and so we not just only stewarded Easter Sunday, but also um, Good Friday, where you saw we had 38 churches come under one banner at Red Hill. And we really um, were a catalyst to bring the church together and to celebrate the unity of his body. So really proud of our staff, of our church, who just went really over time. They went, like, they went into high gear. So if you could just say thank you to our staff. I think they slept like 20 hours in aggregate all together. So um, yeah, I really, really appreciate their heart um, and their hard work this past weekend. You know, our call is really to bring the Church of Hawaii together. The Lord really showed us, you know, that he's moving in a way that is powerful, really raising the tide of all churches in Hawaii. Um, and would we, willing to be, would we be willing to be like John the Baptist? to really prepare the way of the Lord uh, for him to really bring his glory into the islands. 
And I love it in this um, season where he's saying, you know, um, can we, are we willing to be, not to um, be able to have a celebrity pastor or a celebrity church, uh, but can we raise the tide of all churches only to make Jesus famous? So can we just say amen to the Lord on that? Thank you, Taylor. But God is doing something incredible, not just in our church, but really across our island and across our state. Amen. And so, family, we're going to continue our time of worship together through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And we just want to encourage you that when we sow in financially, this is actually what we get to be a part of. Is stuff like this, because like Pastor Creighton said, we're not here to make a pastor famous. We're not here to make a church famous. We're here to make Jesus famous amongst our state, across the nation, and around the globe. Amen. So there's different ways to partner with us financially on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and pray for our tithes and offerings today. If you could just bow your hearts with me. And so Jesus, we just give you all glory, God, all praise that it was all because of you that we could experience something within our islands like we did last Good Friday. And Lord, we thank you that it's not about one pastor. It's not about one church. It's all about you. And so as we give today, would we do so um, out of the selflessness of our hearts, that we would be people who are generous, that we care about your kingdom coming here in Hawaii. And so we bless you in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Amen. Just a couple of things that are happening within our church community. Uh, The first one is this. It's water baptism. Everyone say water baptism. And so, I mean, I was soaked to hear from Pastor Renee. We already have like, I think, 14 people signed up deciding to say, hey, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to take the next step in my faith. And then this is really a part where we get to come together as a spiritual family um, to celebrate them, uh, to support them. But if it's on anyone's heart here this morning and you say, hey, I've never been water baptized. I want to get water baptized. Um, take that next step in my faith journey, my walk with Jesus. Uh, we want to encourage you to reach out to Pastor Renee. Uh, you can email her at Renee at C4.Church. Or if you see her in the hallways, I'm sure she's greeting somebody. Uh, you could let her know right there as well. Uh, the second thing is this is we have a parents and youth workshop happening on Thursday, April 18th. And here's the topic, teen dating. Yes, I thought I was going to get crickets, but I'm glad I got a wow. (laughs) Wow. Yes, this is something dating is not necessarily, I don't know how many parents actually do that and have that conversation with their kids. Um, I will say this, though, out of just my personal experience, dating relationships was really something I never had conversations uh, with my parents about. And I just remember all the the mistakes, um, the heartache. Um, the hurt that I've caused others because I wasn't really equipped in this area. And, you know, just talking to any parents, you have teenagers in the room. I know we do a great job of um, being a part of their educational life, their sports life. Um, I want to encourage you. This is a this is a part of the life within our kids that we want to be a part of. Um, our heart is to bring children and parents together. And so we want to encourage you. You can attend this. It's actually going to be happening um, We're dedicating one of our Collide Youth Ministry Nights to host this, okay? It is limited capacity, um, or actually like 100 people because we make room for our kids too. Uh, But if you have a 7th to 12th grader, um, you guys want to do this together, um, you can go ahead and scan the QR code on the screen to register. If you have any questions, please come find me after service. I don't know if our family ministry director, Dean, Dean right there in the back, um, he'll be available to field any questions as well. But this is very very important for our young ones. Um, And so we want families to be together on mission when it comes to the dating life of teenagers. And so very awkward for teens, very awkward with parents. I can tell you it will be worth it. Amen. Amen. I hope you believe in that. Amen. Because I do. Okay. But with that, uh, we're starting a brand new series this morning. And uh, I'm going to introduce our teaching pastor, Pastor Chad Reese, to introduce us to the new series. Would you welcome Pastor Chad? It's alive in Jesus' name. Come on. (laughs) Hey, can we real quickly, before we get going, can we praise God for everything that happened last week? We saw that in the video. 
testimony after testimony of what God did on Easter Sunday at McKinley High School as well. God just drawing family members, moms and dads and children to himself. Uh, I got a special seat from the platform. I got to see what the Holy Spirit was doing throughout Easter Sunday service as just families. Just you see the tears coming uh, as reconciliation is happening. Things that haven't been said maybe in years, maybe never before. Uh, said in that moment, God prompted something, we leaned in, we entered in, and, and we're obedient to what God was doing, and he showed up major. And so, man, I just want to say thank you, uh, those of you joining us online as well. Uh, just thanks for being part of this community. Thanks for being obedient to God. Some of us, for the first time, coming to church, somebody invited, man, something of the Holy Spirit gripped your heart, and you're back here again this week saying, I raised my hand, I chose to follow Jesus. What does that mean? Right? What does it mean for me to live now according to the ways that Jesus taught and live in community? And that's really what this next six weeks is going to be about. We have a, a series that we're calling Family Matters. There it is right there. Family Matters. Because in the kingdom of God, turn to your neighbor and tell them Family Matters. Family Matters. Family Matters. When it comes to, again, the way that Jesus taught us to live, family was crucial. Family was important. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was creating this teaching series, I said, man, look at this. Uh, how many of you remember this guy right here? You guys remember who this is? Steve Urkel. He had that famous line, right? Did I do that? And uh, if you've never, if you didn't grow up in the 90s, listen, I'm sorry. That was the best decade of ever, right? That's where I grew up. And... Uh, <laughs> This was one of the shows, and this guy, Steve Urkel, if you didn't follow the show, it's totally fine. But uh, the guy, Steve Urkel, was like a neighbor to this family, and he would just always come over and be in their business and just overstaying his welcome, right? And he was clumsy. You could see he was kind of nerdy, and he would always say, did I do that? He would, like, smash something, you know, kick a vase over, whatever, and he would always say, did I do that? But the thing that I loved about this show, you guys, the more I thought about it, you know, uh, it's a fun show. Sitcoms never reflect reality. None of us have a Steve Urkel in our family. Absolutely not. Who we'd rather kick them out than have them in. You know what I mean? None of us deal with that. Uh, but this family did, right? And the more I thought about it, the more that I, I realized this actually was kind of a reflection of the way that you and I live. Right, This family who we love everything so nice and neat, especially when it comes to the people that are around us. Some of us consider our home, the place that we live, kind of like a sanctuary, an oasis where we can get away from. We have the right people in and the wrong people out. You know what I'm talking about? And if you're one of the wrong people, you're out pretty soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like to have people over. And I thought, this is how we live, you and I. If we really think about it, our lives here today, it doesn't matter if you've been following Jesus for 10 minutes, 10 years, right? We like our lives to be compartmentalized. Like there's a school that I go to and then I go home, right? Or there's a job or a workspace that I go to and then I go home. And on Sundays, where do we go? Yeah, you're sitting in it right now, right? Those of you online as well. We go to church and then we go home. We go to lunch. And then we go home. We like our lives to look neat. And when something comes in and disrupts that, doesn't it throw us off sometimes? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm a really introverted person. And every time I say that, you guys, people don't believe me. It's like a surprise. You're on the stage. You're so, yes, I am. God's gifted me in that way. But people don't bring me energy, right? Naturally, what brings me energy is drawing away and being alone for a little bit so that I can have energy, right, to do the things that God has called me to do. I ran across this meme recently, really describes me. Right? It says, uh, when they convince you to host a small group at your house, and the sign says, please leave by nine. <laughs> oh, I love that you're here. Just don't forget to go home, right? You know? <laughs> and that really, uh, it describes me, but many of us are like that, right? doesn't matter you're introverted, extroverted. At a certain point, somewhere, somehow, people overstay their welcome, right? But... But here's the question is that I want us to wrestle with over the next six weeks in this series called Family Matters is not how do I live, right? That's one question to answer, but here's the real question. What is a Jesus following way of living in community or family mean? 
right? What is a Jesus following way of living in community or family? I know the way that I was taught to live in family, right? I know the way the world teaches us to live in family. I have a sports teams, talk about work teams, right? I know how to be in community and family in quotations, right? According to all these different ways, but what does it look like to live in a Jesus following way, right? What does scripture teach us about family? And so before we dive into this question, I know it can be like a, man, Chad, that's a big question. Look, I'm not looking to answer it all today, right? I'm believing that over the next six weeks, like a Polaroid photo, that God's going to develop the picture for us. If you're here, you need to know whether you've been, again, you just received Jesus last week or you've been following Jesus for a long time. Following Jesus was never meant to be an individualized experience. Yeah, You can have a personal relationship with Jesus, but Jesus always taught us to live in community. We're supposed to read scripture in community. We're supposed to be living with each other, one another, right, in community. So what does that look like? And as we unpack that question from the start, we need to to really address the fact that family to every single one of us means something different. Is that true? Like when I say the word family, you have a different idea than I might have. And the person sitting next to you probably has a different idea of what family means based on the way that we were raised and the context we grew up in. And staying with this theme of shows, all right, that I enjoyed and probably you did as well. Some of us view family like this, right? Like the Wonder Years. It was like the perfect family. It was mom, dad, and brother and sister, and they had a white picket fence, and everything was perfect. And, of course, there were some, you know, arguments and things, but nothing out of the ordinary. Things looked really good, and that's your idea of family. That's the way you grew up. That's amazing. There's nothing wrong with that. Others of us, you might remember this show, family looks like the Brady Bunch. We're like blended family, right? We're like mom and dad got separated, but both of them had kids. The next thing you know, it's a story of a man named Brady, you know, and he was bringing up his boys, and then he met, right? And then one day, the, yeah, he met, the woman met this fellow, and they knew that it was much more than a hunch, right? You guys remember the song. Anyway, I'll leave that alone. But family looks like this for you guys, right? Where it's like, man, it's not stereotypical. It's not like what you saw on TV. It's much more blended. And there's a lot of nuance in there. There's a lot of things that people don't maybe understand or know about our families based off of, again, how we grew up, how we were raised, right? Others of us, and this was big in in our generation, you guys, is family maybe didn't even have anything to do with mom and dad sometimes, right? Because uh, there's this show, right, Friends, where family... Community meant the people that I was living alongside of in that season, that they became my family throughout my life. They were the hardest seasons, the things that I celebrated the most. Some of us in this room and online, mom and dad, maybe for whatever reason, weren't a part of that. And you actually were raised in family, but it was with friends around you. It was people that you chose instead of people that you that chose you. Right. And so we need to identify that we all come from different spaces. Can I bring us under one definition of family? Yeah. And it's a working definition. I want to tell you what I'm about to show you is not perfect. Okay. It has its flaws maybe, but here's how we can all anchor as we go forward together to one definition. Because otherwise the expectations get all out of whack. You're expecting one thing. You're expect. When I say, hey, come be part of our family. You're thinking, well, that's not family to me. So can we all just identify under one and and wrestle with this, right? Toss this around. It's a working definition. But family is the people that I belong with and the people that I belong to. Family being the people that I belong with. I belong with them. We're going in the same direction. We have a common set of values, but I also belong to them. I'm seen by them. They're seen by me. I know them. They know me. That family being the people that I belong with and the people that I belong to. Because again, we live in this kind of world where, man, I might belong with people that I work with. Because why? We're going after the same thing. Our business is going after the same thing. And I believe in that. When I'm a school teacher, our school's going after that thing, raising and educating students. And I believe in that. I belong with them, but I don't belong to them. They don't know me. I clock in and clock out. Right? Or the other side is I, I belong to people. Right? They know me. Uh, sometimes we share very vulnerably in different spaces. That could be anywhere. 
but we're not necessarily going in the same direction. So many of us live lives where, man, my closest friends are going that way, and I'm trying to follow Jesus this way. So how does that work out? When we talk about this series over the next six weeks, Family Matters, we're saying that family is going to be the people that I belong with and the people that I belong to. Really, the picture that Jesus painted for us was biblical community. When we talk about scripture, it was less about things being compartmentalized and everything coming under one umbrella of biblical community. This is a Jesus-following way of operating in family, where my nuclear family, my biological family, my work friends, my school friends, my church, the friends that I have outside all come under this one umbrella of biblical community. I don't go to church one day and then act a different way the rest of the week. You know what I'm talking about? Some of us do that. We've been raised in that. That's, that's fine, right? But what we're saying over the next six weeks is can we wrestle with the idea that according to Scripture, this is all under one umbrella, right? Who I am in Christ, it permeates every area of my life. It goes with me to work. It goes with me to school. It goes with me home. It goes with me to church and after church when I go eat lunch, wherever it is. That this is a more accurate biblical picture of community is everything's under the umbrella. But what does that mean, Chad? Right? What does that look like? I might understand that, but man, there's fears involved with that. Right? There's hurt involved with that. There's trust that's been damaged in that space. So how does this look? And where do you see that? Right? The, the best place I can anchor us biblically is Acts chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, you can open there. Those of you online, we're going to be uh, Acts chapter 2 for a little bit. Then we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 10 for a little bit as well. So if you have your Bibles, you can take those out of your phones. Acts chapter 2, and then we're going to move into Hebrews chapter 10. Again, trying to answer this question of what is a Jesus-following way of living in community, living in family? Right? And in Acts chapter 2, what happened? Well, Jesus had left, right? The church, we just celebrated Easter, and now the disciples are called to lead the church forward. Jesus empowers, and Jesus says, now you're going to lead my charge, my church forward. And what happens? We see that the disciples, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. All the believers, everybody say all. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Now, let's stop there. Remember our definition of family, right, that we're working with. The people that I belong with and the people that I belong to, right? Now, remember, with means that we have everything in common, just like these guys did. Right? It says that they had everything in common, the disciples did. They shared things. They had the same set of beliefs. We're following the same guy. His name is Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. I hope uh, if you came today, if you're online, that that's the name that you're putting above every other name. Because that means you and I have something uh, in common, right? That I belong with you. Just like these is. All the believers were together, had everything in common. And what did they devote themselves to? It says it devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to what? To being with one another. Yeah, fellowshipping together, to breaking bread, to, to eating together and leaving by nine. You know what I mean? Like to, to just having a meal, cleaning up. Got to go sleep, you know. But it says that they devoted themselves to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Do you see how they belonged with each other? Yeah. They were doing the same things. They were believing the same things, walking in the same direction. They weren't perfect. Listen, I don't know if you knew this or not, but nobody sitting next to you is perfect at this. Right? The lie that the enemy can sow is there's perfect Christians and then there's imperfect Christians. And one of them is better than the other. If you're sitting next to a perfect Christian, can I tell you they're in the wrong place? Because <laughs> Jesus came for those of us who needed help. Right? And that's me. That's me first, man. I want to raise my hand on that. I hope you do as well. Right? So they had everything in common. They were with each other, but they also belonged to each other. It says every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with sincere what? Their hearts were drawn in towards each other. 
they were connected, right? Their hearts were sincere, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved, right? Now, let's stop there, because a lot of times, uh, you know, I've even done this, where you come to church, you unpack a certain set of scripture, and nothing along with the context of what is happening. Why is this the case, right? Because Timothy teaches us that all of scripture is profitable for you and I, right? The Bible says that all scripture is God breathed. It's inspired by God. And listen, it's for you and me today. Turn to your neighbor and tell it, uh, tell them it's for you. The Bible's for you. Scripture's for you, right? This is for you. But listen, it was written to a specific set of people living in a specific set of contexts and times that wasn't for us, right? What's happening in Acts chapter 2 is not the same thing that's happening on Oahu here today in your life and in mine. It's different, right? So it's for us, but it's not necessarily to us. Does that make sense? Now, why? Because it's profitable for us, for teaching. It's profitable to teach us, Scripture says. It's profitable to correct us. It's profitable to encourage me and inspire me. But it's not necessarily written to me. See, what happened was Jesus had just left. These guys were left carrying the ball. Does that make sense? Like, they're now entrusted to take this church forward. And they're facing, you guys, heavy persecution. Right? And a lot of times, what what you and I can do is we read the Bible prescriptively. Does that make sense? Where it's a prescription, where we're supposed to do everything according to what it says here. But this is a more descriptive passage. What does that mean, Chad? It means it's descriptive. It's describing a certain time and a certain context. Now, if I try and live the way that this is describing here in today's world, it's going to look a lot different, right? I'm not necessarily called to live exactly the same. And what can happen, why I bring this up, is because believers can actually use scripture against each other, right? That if your church doesn't look like this, you're doing it the wrong way, right? Where it's not necessarily meant for that, this is a descriptive passage. Are there things that are prescribed in there? Sure, I can break bread with other believers. I can have a sincere heart towards other believers. But if I'm not doing that, am I wrong? Not necessarily, Right? Because community, family, right? it looks different based on the context that you and I are living in than it did here. Right? And sometimes even I've heard it like, the Lord added to their number daily. So if God is not bringing people to your church daily, then you must be living outside of Acts chapter 2. And I, I got to wrestle with that, you guys. I got to say, I don't think that's accurate. Right? Because their context, again, looked a lot different than mine's did. Right? Or does. In fact, Jesus himself, what do we know about Jesus? He said, Matthew chapter 22, Jesus replied, why is community important? How do I know that this is critical to the life of a believer? Well, Acts chapter 2, I can find it in the teaching of Jesus in Matthew 22. When they asked Jesus, what's the greatest command, Jesus? How do we, what's the most important thing that we can do as followers of your way? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. That's supposed to say. That's a typo. I was tired. You heard Pastor Creighton. We collectively slept 20 hours as a staff or whatever it was. All right. That should say soul. Uh, And with all your mind. And then he said the first. This is the first and greatest commandment. Then he said this line right here, you guys. It's critical that we see this. He said the second is what? The second is just like it. Not the second is less than. Not the second is the afterthought. He said the second is like it. You're to love God with all of yourself. And you're to love your neighbor as yourself. Right? You're to love your neighbor as yourself. So many of us, you know, we hear that, that uh, church followers of Jesus, we're supposed to be a spiritual family. We think, man, that sounds exhausting. You know what sounds better, Chad, is I just do me and Jesus. It's just my personal relationship with Jesus, my devotion. You know why? I've said it before, and I hold to this. I've said this. I didn't know that it was maybe not necessarily as accurate in that time, but it was accurate for my life. I said, I'm really good at this Jesus thing until it comes to other people. Right? And that's still true today, you guys, that I'm really good at following Jesus until it comes to other people. Why? Because other people bring problems, 
right? Other people bring circumstances and situations. Other people bring things that I'm not necessarily comfortable with. So I'm really good at following Jesus until it comes to everybody else, right? But that's not what he taught. He didn't say, hey, if you're comfortable, right? He doesn't say if it always fits and they're always your people and it's not awkward and there's nobody who's kind of, you know, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Who doesn't necessarily jive with everything you jive with. They didn't watch Family Matters growing up. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't say that. He said, love God with everything you have. And the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Right? There's an aspect. We belong with people And we're supposed to belong to people. How do I love my neighbor as myself if I don't open myself to them? I just withhold certain aspects of me. And so as we continue, did you know I I saw this recently? And this is going to shock you guys, maybe. The Census Bureau last year put out a data point. And again, this has nothing to do with the Bible, but has everything to do with the world you and I are living in. Right? It said that at this point in time, it, it, we are spending more time alone coming out of the pandemic than, than we ever have. Ever since 2013, actually, they identified that our time alone, that black line that you see going up, that's the amount of hours you and I spend alone per week. Those gray lines that you see going down, the first one is the amount of time that we spend with friends per week. And then the last one that you see going really down is the amount of time that we spend with our companions each week. The amount of hours that we spend with companions, the amount of hours we spend with friends. And then the number that's going up and up and up, and you know this, ever since the pandemic, it kind of allowed us, gave us permission to work mobily, right? To stare at a screen instead, to stay at home instead, to do church and community uh, separately instead, right? But it, this, is a, this is accurately uh, just studied, you guys, by the Census Bureau, that this is what our culture is, this is what we're being taught right now. This is what we're battling against, is this isolation. I'm all alone. I'm meant to do it alone. And, and listen, less time with friends, Less time in community, even with companions or spouses. Now, if you're a husband in this place, date night is happening this week, you guys. Everybody said, because I just told all the wives that I just threw us under the bus. But it's going to be for the better, you guys. I promise this is going to be for the better, right? But here's the thing. That's, that's where we are. And, and here's what I want to ask us is what is the fruit of that? What is the fruit of living the way that you and I have been living? Where you know what? I just don't have time. Chad, I wish I could be in the community. I wish I could be in a circle and a small group. And I wish I know that this is what we're supposed to be living in. And however, whatever reality, we're supposed to be wrestling towards living this way. But I just don't have time. Right? Or you know what? I've been hurt too many times. I, I don't have the heart. I don't want to be disappointed one more time. I don't want to go through this whole thing one more time. Right? But what's the fruit of living like this? Because I don't know about you, but I look at the news every day. And every day I see another story where I'm like, how did this happen? How did that person get so angry? Or what was going in their heart? What was going on in them that they chose to live like this? That they chose this behavior? That they chose to pull out this weapon? That they, You know what I mean? I'm looking at the news thinking, how did this happen? And the question that I always ask is, where was their community? Where was the community around them? And listen, I'm not casting blame or shame on anybody. This is what I'm wrestling with, is man, what has been the fruit of our society living like this? isolated. I'm all alone. It's just me. I'm the one. Everything's on my shoulders. What has the fruit been? Right? And might there be a different way? Again, are we living a Jesus following way of community and family? Now, I realize some of you, man, you're rock stars at this, right? The, I'm introverted. The extroverts are going, Chad, we got this, bro. We've been living in community. Trust me. <laughs> Everybody's my best friend, right? <laughs> And so hold tight, right, because I have something for you guys as well. But I think most of us, if we're being honest, right, are kind of living in this reality. And so, again, in Hebrews chapter 10, we were in Acts chapter 2. Second place I want to bring us is Hebrews chapter 10. And this is what it says. Oh, my favorite word in the Bible starts here, you guys. 
therefore. Everybody say therefore. therefore. Now let's stop there uh, because, again, whenever you see that word, you got to figure out what it's there for, right? So prior to this, the people that this is written to were living in the same reality. The author is actually in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 18, actually reminding them of the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus and what it means for their life. The same thing we just celebrated on Good Friday and Easter. This author is telling that church in that time, right? And then he says, therefore, because you know Jesus, because you know about salvation, because you know about his resurrection and the reconciliation of all things back towards him, because you know that, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence now to enter the most holy place. Come on, how many of you saved by the blood of Jesus? Right here, saved by the blood of Jesus. Because we have confidence now by the blood of Jesus, by a new, everybody say new, new. and living way. Living way. It's a new and living way. It's not the same way we used to live. It's not the way that the world is living, that we live in loneliness. It's a new and living way. Open for us through the curtain. This is his body, Jesus' body. And since we have a great priest now who's Jesus over the house of God, let us what? Draw near with a, watch this, sincere heart. Remember Acts chapter 2? They gathered with a sincere heart. They belong to each other, right? Let us draw near now with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that our faith brings us. It's not an exercise of raising our hand, right? This is a journey with God of learning of the assurance that that decision that you made last week or that you made 10 years ago or whenever you made that decision, what's the assurance of that, right? Faith has something that it brings, Having our hearts sprinkled now, we've been washed, cleansed, right, from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope. Everybody say hope. There's a hope that you and I confess. For he who promised is what? Jesus is faithful to what he said, right? Now watch this, though. And let us consider... Let's think about, let's ponder. The language is like a meditation. It would lean us towards meditation, chewing on, ruminating over. Let's consider how we can spur one another on toward what? Love and good works or good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. What is he saying? He's saying, listen, if you profess and confess the blood of Jesus over your life, there's a hope. There's an assurance in that. It's not full yet. I'm still figuring it out. I'm still working it out. But he who called me is what? Faithful. He's the one that's faithful. Even when I might not be fully faithful in that time, he is faithful. And what does it say? Because of that, you and I have a job now. We have an assignment now. It's not a performance-based assignment, but it's an assignment nonetheless. We're to consider how we can look at each other, one another as family, the people that I belong with, and consider how I can spur you on into love, right, and good works. How do I belong to you, and how do you belong to me? Because we all belong to Jesus, So how do I belong to you? How do we spur one another on into love and into good works? Encouraging one another. Not giving up meeting, right? Because you're busy. Listen, I get it. Our schedules are packed, right? We got practices. We got work. Oh, come on. Some of us got work, right? Some of us are putting hours and hours. And listen, that's not because you're a workaholic. That's because you're trying to survive, That's because you're trying to live and raise a family and survive in in this uh, expensive state of ours that we live in, right? So time is absolutely, but he's saying, listen, don't don't become in the habit. What were they facing? Now, they weren't facing time issues or they weren't for uh, church hurts. They weren't facing that stuff. They were facing persecution, right? Like the reason why the author chose to tell this to that church in that time period is because if they didn't, they were going to get killed. Right? There was an outside force that was coming against them that was very real, just as it is with you and I. It's not the same, but it's similar. 
there's an outside force, right, that presses up. Every time I used to joke, man, we, every time we go to circle, my wife and I, and she'll say this because she gave me permission, right? But how many of you find every time you go to circle, you get into an argument on the way to go to the small group? It's like, why are we going to this small group when all we do is argue on the way to the small group? We had a better shot at home, right? There's an outside force, you guys. But how many of you know every time you press past that, every time you show up anyway, despite how I'm feeling or despite what argument took place, right? Every time I get there, what do I find? Oh, I'm not the only one. You guys fought on the way here too. <laughs> and we all need Jesus to help us navigate, but we also need one another that I'm called to consider how do I spur you on into love and good works despite what you're walking through, despite your season of life, right? Despite your marriage or your singleness or your, your aging kupuna who's now a grandparent who struggles with loan, despite all that, what does it look like to live in community to, to, that you would be people that I belong with and that I belong to? Amen. And can I give you one last thing before we get into how do I apply this this week? is that this setting right here, I can't belong with and I can't belong to everybody in this setting. Because some of us think, and I'm just going to throw this out there, that coming to church on Sundays means I'm part of a spiritual family. The answer is yes, but. Right? The answer is yes, you do, but I can belong with everybody on a Sunday morning. I can't necessarily belong to everybody on a Sunday morning. Does that make sense? Do you guys know what I walked through this week? No. I don't know what you walked through either. But I'll tell you so the names of some people who do. Right? Because I, I'm walking with them. I belong with them. And I belong to them. And so part of my encouragement as we apply this message. Come on. The word of God is meant to be applied. Right? It's not an intellectual exercise. It's supposed to help me navigate life. It's profitable for me. And so the application is this. Ask yourself this question. Am I part of a spiritual family? Am I a part of a spiritual family? Some of us, the answer is a, a resounding yes, I am. I belong with these people and I belong to these people. If that's you, hold on because I got something for you as well. All right? But most of us really, really dive deep with God on this. Am I part of a spiritual family? Am I part of this community where I belong with them and I belong to them? Right? Because here's the thing that I found, you guys, is the greatest healing that Jesus brings in my life, the greatest instruction, the greatest growth, the greatest opportunities that Jesus brings into my life is not when I'm all by myself. It's when I'm walking alongside other people, where I'm open, where they can speak into things that I cannot see, right? I've heard it, what somebody said, it's like the back of your head, right? I can't see what's on the back of my head right now, but somebody next to me can somebody standing beside me can are are you part of a spiritual family right and that question is not meant to get you stuck right so many of us think i don't belong nobody wants me right i'm so lonely in that place can i encourage you that man if you're walking with people if we're going in the same direction you are part of this family right you belong to the family of god spiritual community is yours for the taking but the question is are you going to step in Right? Am I going to be available to people, not just with people? Right? Remember, family, the people that I belong with and the people that I belong to. I'm going to skip the last part of this passage, and I'm going to tell you a story of, uh, this is going to make me cry. Everybody, can you guys just like send some wind so the, the dust doesn't get in my eyes real fast? <laughs> but I want to tell you a story about a spiritual family, a spiritual community that I belong to. And I belong with. And these faces, again, wow, here it goes. You guys didn't blow. You see what happens? It yeah. didn't do your part. Now I'm crying. But these people right here, you guys, I got to tell you about this. In the pandemic, you guys remember a few years back, everybody's trying to figure out what we were doing and how we were supposed to navigate. And uh, isolation was the norm. It was actually almost like you know, told to us, you need to be isolated. It's for your safety. And so what happened was we started to lose community. How do we gather as a church? There's too many people. And so we started having to gather in these different pockets. And my wife and I, for years prior, we had this idea. We're going to, let's meet in our home. You know, let's gather some people. Let's worship God. 
But here's what I thought. <laughs> I laugh now. It was so serious at the time. I said, there's going to be no more than 10 people that come to this thing. I want more than 10 people in my house. And here's, here's why. Part of it is because I don't like people in my house. <laughs> The other part is, how can we live this thing accurately? The more and more people that get involved, it just starts to dilute things. Relationships start to go side. It's not real relationship. And God started to laugh. <laughs> because by the second or third week, there was already more than 10 people. And I'm losing my mind. My wife's going, yes. I'm going, no. <laughs> but over time, I'll tell you, when I started to belong with these people we're going in the same direction we're following how do we follow jesus how do we live together as a family of god how do we do this thing following jesus as best as we possibly can with sincere hearts like scripture teaches us and then i started to belong to these people or i started to open i started to let my own you know 10 person thing go i started to let the time sometimes we go to like midnight i was like come on you guys but we figured it out, you guys. And what happened? <laughs> what happened? We saw life come over these people. Many of them now worship here at C4 with us. But we saw people now get married, walk through singleness, walk through tough situations in their life, walk through reconciliation with family. Some of them got baptized in Jesus' name. Others of them having children in Jesus' name. I look at my family today. We're changed and transformed. How? By the blood of Jesus and by this community right here. I learned really quick that family doesn't necessarily mean everything that I think and my expectations. But family in the community of God means the people that I belong with and I belong to them. And listen, seasons are going to change. Some of us get weary because, man, I don't want to go through this one more time of learning about 10 more people and getting into relationship one more time. Listen, seasons are going to change, you guys. But relationship and the family of God and the people that I belong to, that's never going to change, right? And so what, what's really stopping me from throwing my heart over that line? Someone's saying, Chad, it's hard to trust again because I've been burned, man. I shared things and people use that to manipulate me. They use that to hurt me, to harm me. Listen, you, you, we can't let the experience of one person determine the whole family of God. Because I promise you this, that he who promised is faithful. That Jesus is sending the right people around you. That if you open your heart beyond, recon, you know, for reconciliation, I'm not saying be reckless. I'm not saying, but be discerning and be open to say, Jesus, if this is what your word is asking us to do, if this is what I see over and over again, that like one brother does to another, that iron sharpens iron, that I need somebody else alongside me. A triple braided cord, right, cannot be broken, right? It's God and it's others alongside me. Jesus, he taught this. If that's what it is, I want to follow as best as I can. Now I get it. There's some of us in here, man, we're taking a big step. It's a big ask, right? How many times a week do I got to meet? How many times is this operate? How are the logistics? Where is this thing taking place? Is it in my house? Is it in your house, right? Listen, I realize there's a lot of questions. There's two people I want to highlight right now that carry the heart, right? You can come talk to me, but again, I'll give you one perspective. Really, these two carry the heart of our community to be in smaller community. What does it mean to belong with and to belong to? You want to talk to Dean, right, our family ministries director. You want to talk to Auntie Renee, who's our community pastor. And they'll help. They're, listen, there's people right now waiting, groups waiting to receive you. If you're saying, man, I don't belong. I've never felt invited. Listen, the invitation is right now, right? Jesus is making the invitation through me to you right now. You belong with this community. Are you going to belong to them as well? Right? Am I going to give it one more shot? Listen, throw my heart over the line. These are the people you want to talk to. They're going to talk to you about, man, I've been hurt before. They're going to listen, and then they're going to encourage. They're going to push you in the right direction, not in the, their direction. But they're going to talk to you. Sit down. I'll do that too. But I want to encourage you to see them as well. Uh, you, would you stand to your feet? I just want to be able to pray for us. And 
close our time together in the word. I hope this was encouraging for you today. I hope the spirit of God grips something on your life and your heart today. Listen, we're not meant to do this alone. God created the world in Genesis, and you see him over and over again say, I created that, and it was good. I created this, and it was good. I created that, it was good. I created man, and it was very good. And then he said there was one thing that wasn't good. He said it's not good for anyone to be alone. It's not good for man to be alone. You can use that in a marriage context. But listen, something of that principle that God set forth at creation is that we're not meant to be by ourselves. We're meant to be with him and we're meant to be with other people. And so right now, if that's you in this place, God is stirring and doing something on your heart. You say, man, Chad, that's me. Maybe a prior season I was in community, but I've stepped out and it's become way too comfortable, right? If that's you in this place, say, man, God is stirring me to jump into community. I need to join a group right now. I need to do some. I need to see Auntie Renee. I need to see Dean. I need to talk to them about what it means to belong to and to belong with this spiritual family. If that's you right now, I just want to pray for you. Go ahead and stick your hands right out in front of you. Just put your hands out like this, like you're receiving a gift from the Lord. And so, Father, right now, I just ask in the name of Jesus... God, that you would give us your spirit. These people, all of us, as a spiritual family, as a community, but there's specific people, God, that you're touching right now, that you're highlighting right now, that this is the season to jump in and belong with, to belong to a family that loves God and that loves each other. But God, we need your boldness. Some of us need your courage. Some of us need your healing, God. Some of us need your peace and your patience, but ultimately we need your love, God. And so would you pour out more Holy Spirit right now? Because our hands out in front of us is nothing more than a humble confession that I can't do this by myself. That there's things that I need to get past and I need to grow past, but I'm not going to do it by myself. I need you, God. And so Holy Spirit, fall on this place. Jesus, you said that the world would know where your followers, your disciples, by the way that we love one another. And so would you help us to do that? In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said a great big amen, amen, and amen.
Just want to thank Pastor Chad for bringing us God's word this morning. And family, as we were um, worshiping together, just kind of got this picture. The Lord reminded me of a house. And um, anytime like people are thinking of maybe selling their house or um, they're buying a house, they send in like a home inspector. And so I just really sense that um, throughout these next six weeks together, um, our families represent the home, how we do family and how it currently exists. But the Holy Spirit would actually be the home inspector. And he would be the one who is going to probably reveal things like you might want to take a look at this. And you might want to take a look at that. And I just want to break off as we continue this journey together over the next five weeks that there's no shame in what the Holy Spirit might reveal to your family. And sometimes when you're, you're told by the home inspector in the natural, it's like, oh my gosh, that's going to cost us a lot of money. Like, is it really worth, like, covering that? And I also just want to encourage us, like, our God is not a God of lack. He's a God of abundance. And as we partner with him, we get a chance to see our families become whole, become healthier. We get to walk in the freedom and breakthrough that he actually intends for all of our families to walk into. Amen. Amen. And so um, throughout this series too, we just knew how important this was beyond the Sunday. And so I just wanted to share one thing that you can expect at the end of our family series, um, Family Matters series, is our team is, is working on, for those of you who are like, man, I want to be a part of a smaller community. I want to jump into what Pastor Chad was mentioning this morning. Um, we just want to say, hey, put that on the docket. Reach out to Pastor Renee and Dean. Uh, but we are actually creating um, an experience where we'd be able to launch at the end of May so that people can taste what it means to be a part of a smaller community. So we just want you to bookmark that. After every week or every message that we have, we've also dedicated a special page for you to take a deeper dive with you and your family. And it doesn't matter if you're uh, married, empty nester, single, um, have kids, whatever it is. Uh, there's a video that's going to be on every week for us to take care of a deeper dive that we weren't able to discuss here in this setting. So you can go to our website, c4.church. And um, you can look at the tab. It'll say Family Matters. There's deeper resources for you there. Um, and uh, with that, I just want to invite our ministry team to the front. Uh, we'd love to pray with you and your family this morning. So feel free if you even need to go grab your keiki on the other side. Bring them here. We'd love to pray um, with you. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you again next week as we continue their series, Family Matters, all together. So we bless you guys. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. We'll see you back here next Sunday. Aloha, family. This concludes our online worship experience. Now, if this was your first time with us, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel, C4 Church Hawaii, and make sure that your notifications are on so you don't miss a thing. And if we're already family, we're so glad that you could join us today. We want to let you know that we are here for you and we would love to pray for you. So actually, let's uh, do that right now. Epulekako, keakua manaloa, thank you. What a joy it is to be in your house. What a joy it is to know you and to love you. And Lord, I pray at this moment that anyone within the sound of my voice, that they would be encouraged, encouraged by the worship or the message or the testimonies that was said today. Lord, I pray that faith would build in their hearts and that you would show yourselves to them and they would be known to you as they already are. But Lord, that they would believe and love you more than they have like ever before. So Lord, we love you and we thank you in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Have a blessed week. Aloha.